Good morning. How's everybody? Have a good night. Anybody do anything fun? Oh, man. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, welcome to Cisco's sponsor track sessions. We've got four sessions for you today. I'm sure you probably all saw them on the schedule. Um, actually, I'm going to go run down and pick up some more of these. I'll pass some of these out um, during the rest of the session. Uh, three more sessions after this one, running all the way through just about to the lunch break. Uh, we're going to start off today with uh, David Brink and Ravi Chandran from our uh, from the Cisco Cloud Platforms and Solutions Group, and we're going to go into the what, whys, and wheres, or whens, because the where is everywhere, right? Uh, of the telco stack. So, David, take it away. Thanks, Gary. Good morning, everybody. So, um, as Gary said, my name is David Brink, and uh, what we're going to cover today it, in a session with uh, myself and Ravi is what is Telco Cloud, uh, building the Telco Cloud, and then uh, what what can I do today? So, what is you know the Telco Cloud, and um, you know this is this, this notion of you know building Telco services you know, on the cloud-based technology. The challenge is that you know the way that you know telco so the way that telco networks are built, and the way that you know cloud networks are built, are you know very different. The, the practices involved are very different between you know, telco networks and uh, and the way that cloud networks are built. You know telco networks typically have to you know comply with SLAs. There's uh, <coughs> often regulatory regulatory and policy compliance with telco networks. Um, there's a lot of process around you know change management, and um, the applications that are stood up in, in the telco space are typically um, very you know, bespoke. Um, they're long-lived. Um, you know, in sort of you know, using the analogy of uh, pets and cattle, you know, this would be pet-like. So, um, as I said, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're the the, uh, the applications are you know very long-lived. They have um, a lot of um, uh, bespoke characteristics, um, like IP addressing. That uh, you know that has to be set set in the uh, in the applications, um, whereas cloud is, is kind of the the exact opposite. So in you know in the cloud space, you know the applications are 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 uh, cattle like. So you you basically bring up the application for as long as you need the application to be running, and then uh, <coughs> excuse me, and then you know, you knock it down at the end of at the end of that session. So it's a very different approach to to how you how you. Um, Build networks and uh, how you run applications. You know, um, you know your cloud apps typically. You, know, you spin them up. Um, if you want to make a change, you know you, you knock the app down and you, you respin it in a, you know, and in, a, in a containerized uh, fashion. So y the idea is that you want to be able to launch new services really quickly in in this space. So what is you know forcing uh, providers to want to go to move into this you know, telco cloud space. What is the forcing function? So, as you know, all of us in the room know, it's 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 5G. So you know, if you look at the quotes there up on the up on the right, you know, around the world, you know, from you know, Telstra in Australia, you know, I got off a plane here in in, uh, in Shanghai, and as you see, you know, all the the carriers here have launched you know different 5G services. Um, you know, in North America, you know, we have Timo and Sprint, T-Mobile and Sprint, building out uh, 5G networks there. Um, you know, BT in, uh, in in the UK, so around the world, this is uh, uh, carriers know they need to build out with uh, with 5G networks. Um, you know, they're looking for driving new uh, driving new revenue streams in in ARP, uh, with uh, additional ARPU, and um, some of the, the comments from some of the analysts is, uh, you know, these 5G networks are going to you know, amplify the strengths and weaknesses of of telcos in this space. So, like, if telcos are able to are able to deploy services in, a, in an agile manner, then uh, then they're in good shape. But telco services who are, you know, still very process bound in, in the old way that they stood services up, they're going to really struggle in this in this new paradigm. So, looking at some of the you know the common challenges of of, of telcos building a, a cloud a cloud in this space is. Uh, is the integration complexity? So, you know, we, you know, they're, you know, they're typically de the, the typical deployment model doesn't, as I've said before, match with the with the cloud deployment model. And uh, you know, how do you 
marry this cloud deployment model um, into their existing processes is, is a challenge. Um, also, the operational readiness. So, you know, is um, how the operations functions are are structured within uh, within carriers today. Um, you know, it, it, one part of it is is training the, is training the operational staff. Is you know, how do I operate a cloud environment? That's one piece of the uh, one piece of the problem. The other side of it is is just how the organization is structured, how the org structure matches or doesn't match a cloud deployment model. So, you know, um, basically it's, one is the training problem and the other is the org alignment problem. And, um, you know, if I use an example of, a very simple example that, that I ran into at a, at a service provider was I was trying to implement zero touch provisioning. Uh, really simple, this is zero touch provisioning for a piece of network hardware, not for a, for a piece of computer hardware. And um, all I needed was a change to a DNS DHCP server. Now, um, trying to get that through took days, a matter of days. And the reason was because I was working with the network team and they weren't really aligned with the team that ran DNS DHCP because they were used to setting up DNS DHCP for the server compute community. So you, you end up with these you know, boundaries these that, and silos that are created within an organization. And that's just one small example of the kind of issues that, 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 uh, that you run into. So you just, I, I think, just, oh, it's easy. I can you know, stand up zero-touch provisioning and, and, you know, and do a demo in two hours, and instead it took me three days. And that's, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty common across many, uh, across, across many providers. So looking at sort of at where we've come from. So if we have a look at you know, how 3G networks were built, um, moving to 4G and then, then to 5G, so you know, historically, back in the in the three G days, we we deployed the applications on you know a physical piece of hardware. In the Cisco case, we had the ASR five thousand, which came from our Starent acquisition. Um, it was a physical device. We loaded software on it in the same way we do on you know, routers and other you know, uh, devices. And that 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 was that was how we built three G networks. And you know, turn up time in that in that world took you know, years potentially, and you know changes would take months. It was you know, a very slow moving, very centralized process. So then came move to 4G. So what we did then is we did what we, we talk about as a, as a lift and shift. So we took the, <coughs> excuse me, we took, the, we, we took those applications and we virtualized them. So we, we set them up to run in VNFs and we ran them on as uh, you know, VMs on whatever hypervisor, whether it's you know, typically OpenStack, which is what we'd be running it on. And, uh, and we sort of, so we improved things a bit, you know, turn up, then went to the order of months, and, you know, changes were down in sort of in the minute type, type of time frame. Then we're moving to 5G. So now we, it's, it's not a lift and shift. At this point, all the applications have to be refactored to run inside Containerize and to run as, um, you know, uh, cloud native you know, network functions. So basically, um, <coughs> ourselves, Cisco, and and others have had to totally refactor all our applications to run for 5G and, uh, and containerize them. And you know, what, what this does is you know, now we can you know, spin up in a matter of hours, spin up new applications in a matter of hours, and we can make any changes in minutes. But also we can you know, scale up and scale down our applications um, to run anywhere in the network. So if we want to run it um, you know, in the core and we we'll spin up applications at the edge, far edge, we can, we can easily do that. And you know, some of the later presentations we're going to go through sort of um, you know, how, this is, how this is done in, uh, certainly in, in, in Rakuten. <coughs> so this, you know, th you know, this enables your providers to move now very rapidly into new markets. So there's a lot of benefit there, but then it comes to um, you know, how do we get this to actually be, you know, to be operated in a uh, in a way that is that is supportable. So, you know, in terms of first principles in, in the telco cloud space, you know, we're looking at uh, automation. So, automation is key in, in, a, in a way that, you know, you know, there was automation in 3G and 4G networks, but you know, now we're into the cloud space and containerization. Um, 
automation is, is even more important and even more critical in terms of um, <coughs> not just st you know, standing up the infrastructure, you know, standing up the applications, scaling applications up and down as required, um, and moving them, around, moving them around the network. Um, yeah, also uh, distributed capability, same thing. So the ability to move, to have you know, a single environment where we can you know, move, uh, move bandwidth around. So like if, if, it's, if a provider was wanting to offer, say, um, latency centered apps, uh, say gaming apps, and you would need to move those, those uh, apps out towards the edge, we could do that easily in, in a cloud-based environment. So there's you know, tremendous business advantage to be to doing this, but there's a lot of operational process that has to um, be shifted along within the, um, within the telcos to be able to support this model. Thank you, David. So morning, everyone. My name is uh, Ravi Chandran. I am a technical marketing engineer with uh, Cisco's Cloud Platform and Solutions Group. And my focus is on the automation part of the cloud solutions. So in my presentation, what I want to cover is, a, is an overview of the entire solution we have for cloud providers so that it can set a context for the next three presentations. Because in the next three presentations, you are going to see all the details. And, and I'm going to set the overview for you. Yeah. So stop me at any time and ask questions. Otherwise, we have a Q&A at the end. Thank you. So what we have for a cloud solution, and this is something most of you know. Because when you want to set up a cloud infrastructure, you basically start with the platforms, the hardware, the compute storage, networking, and then you set up the cloud operating system, which is OpenStack in our case, or it could be other VIMs. So that's the first thing we do to set up the infrastructure. And then you build the capacity on top, like the services and the, the specific needs of your customers. So that's the, the first thing we do, infrastructure. And then you look at automation. You can do cloud solutions manually, but practically nobody does it because that's not the way to, to monetize a cloud. Almost all cloud providers give you automation tools, and uh, we think it's mandatory for you to, to augment your infrastructure with automation tools. When we say automation, it means many things, like uh, there are different standards today for automation, but the most well-known standard is the Etsy standards because Etsy came up with this uh, NFV mono solution sometime in 2011 or 12. So it's fairly standard. Now it is in release three. So as per the Etsy standards, you have three layers of automation. The first is the NFV orchestration. So the orchestrator is the, is the layer that knows how to orchestrate your services in the, in the bottom layers. And below that, you have the VNF manager. The VNF manager is the lifecycle manager of your VNFs. Whether it's a Cisco or third-party VNF or CNF, it should be capable of creating the VMs. It should be capable of managing the lifecycle of the VMs. And the bottom layer you have is the VIM, the Virtual Infrastructure Manager, which is OpenStack here. So these three layers must be automated through APIs and through standards if you want to achieve the full benefits of a cloud. The third part is the services. And this is, again, something that we see very commonly. Because though we have standards, there are still service providers specific services we need to do. Because you may have your own business processes. You may have your own customer requirements or rules and regulations specific to country. So we need to implement all those specific needs inside the infrastructure with automation. So we provide that tailored solutions on top of the automation and infrastructure. So our services team usually would end up doing a lot of services for you to make the solution specific to what you want. And lastly, you need supporting software because the cloud platform alone doesn't give you everything. You need, for example, a good VNF repositories, good CNF repositories from multiple vendors. You need to have domain controllers. You need monitoring. You need the, the testing tools, you need security. 
So all those extra software also is in, in our solution. And we make all these in a, in a loosely coupled way so that you can pick and choose what you want. We don't emphasize that you need to buy everything from Cisco. It's not practical. We give you the option to pick and choose. But if you want to do it end to end, we also have that solution for you. So that's the, that's the way we, we have designed our cloud solution. In the next slide, I'm going to talk about specific products, and we are going to see more details of that in the next sessions. But uh, here I'm giving the overview of the, the, the entire suite. So we can divide the, the entire cloud framework of Cisco into two parts. This is a very, very high level division. The bottom layer you see, the blue layer, is the Cisco NFVI, the infrastructure layer. Uh, here we are talking about uh, an enhanced OpenStack solution, which we call Cisco Virtualized Infrastructure Manager, or CVIM for short. So the next session we have is a, is a very detailed coverage of CVIM. And then we also have another session on the Cisco Container Platform. So that's the infrastructure layer. Uh, in those presentations, you can see why we do this. Why can't we take an open source OpenStack? And why we enhance it with our own tools? And what are the values you would get? We will cover in those uh, sessions. The top layer you see is all the management and orchestration products. And this is as per the HC standards. Uh, we have three main uh, components in this uh, mono layer. The first is what we call NSO, uh, which stands for Network Services Orchestrator. So this complies with the HC orchestrator layer. And then we have the Elastic Services Controller, or ESC for short. And this is our VNF manager. So we have HC compliant orchestrator and VNF manager. And we also have a third component here called NFVO core function pack. We have built it specifically to comply with all the HC standards. Because we see the need that there are situations where you may use our orchestrator, but a third party VNF manager. Or it could be our uh, VNF manager but you may use another orchestrator. So how to achieve the standards in those cases? So with this NFVO core function pack, we are creating the HC compliant uh, interfaces. So we have also got examples of customers who use this interface to connect Cisco and third party components. So we have an example in the, in the use cases later, but this is the value we want to give you. We don't force you to buy a tightly coupled solution because we think that's not practical. Uh, you should be able to pick and choose and, and still get your value. Okay, moving on, let's quickly run through each of these components. So the first is NSO, which is the, the orchestrator solution. NSO is basically a multi-vendor tool. It was designed as a multi-vendor tool. It, it's a very unique thing because usually Cisco products are designed for Cisco network. But we acquired this product as a multi-vendor product. So as of today, NSO uh, supports 170 types of network uh, families. So when I say network family, you can think of Cisco IOS as a family. So inside that family, there are a lot of sub-models, but they're all one family. Juniper, Junos is a family. So we have 170 types of networks that NSO can onboard today. That's both physical and virtual. Okay, so the, the way we use NSO is we, we give you standard interfaces like NetCon or REST or RedCon, uh, RESTCon. You can use any of your tools or portals or APIs to trigger a request to NSO. Uh, NSO takes that service request, it translates it into the network configs, and it will apply it on your physical or virtual networks. So that's the role NSO plays as an orchestrator. You can use it for your physical and virtual and Cisco and third-party networks. Okay, moving on, how NSO can do that, right? I mean, what is the architecture behind it? We have these, uh, these layers here, which is called the network element driver, or a NED for short. So as of today, we have like 170 NEDs for different network families, and these elements uh, know how to talk to a particular network family. So it can connect to that device, whether it's physical or virtual. It can do the configuration of the device. And on top, you have these service managers and device managers. And these are 
the young models that you build. And these are the intent that you want to apply to the network. So the service manager takes your intent in the, in the simple Yang model, it translates it into the device specific request and the device then um, gets the configs through the network element driver. And once you do that, we also keep a copy of the config in our database, so it becomes a very good backup repository for you. So in case there is a problem on the network, if you want to uh, enable the service again, you can always restore from the CDB. So this is a very powerful tool, uh, and we have seen a lot of customers using this today in, in different use cases. Uh, if you want to know more about NSO, you can come to our booth in the marketplace. We can show you a demo and also explain more of the features. Yeah. Uh, moving on, the NFVO core function pack. Uh, as I said before, this is the HC compliant solution that we have built. And uh, as you know, in HC, we have got all these standards like SOL001 which is a TOSCA definition for the VNFD and NSD. And SOL006 is a Yang definition of the same. Then we have got SOL003, which is the interface between a generic orchestrator and VNF manager. So all these standards we have taken and applied inside this function pack. So when you install this in the solution, you get an HC compliant interface. And you can use any HC compliant tool to talk to this a solution. For example, a VNF manager that's not Cisco, but HC compliant can be uh, interfaced to this. And lastly, the Elastic Services Controller. This is our VNF manager. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's a tool to create a VNF and manage the lifecycle. So it can onboard, deploy VMs in uh, our CVIM or OpenStack solutions, and then it can monitor the VM. So if the VM dies, ESC can spin it up again. So that's what we call healing. It can do scaling, it can do updates, it can do undeploy. So it's a complete lifecycle manager of your VMs. And in the next version of ESC, we are also supporting CNFs, the containers. So you can also spin up containers and you can manage them. So it's a very powerful HC compliant generic VNF manager. So moving on, uh, we also have different sizes and this is again something we will cover in the next session. So you can have an edge pod, which is a small size installation. You can have a micro pod, uh, medium size, and a full uh, size. So depending on how big is your implementation, you can, you can pick and choose the size. And uh, this is something uh, more practical, like though people are interested in the, the next generation solutions like NFV and also containers, they are also, they can't throw away whatever you have today. You know, you have to live with the, the current and the future. And there will be a lot of migration that will happen along the way. So the way we have built these solutions is that uh, you should be able to manage the current and the future requirements. So tools like NSO are designed that way. You can provision the current physical network. You can also provision the future VNFs and CNFs. So one tool for you to manage your, your existing physical network and the futuristic virtual networks. And this is my summary slide. Uh, just to give you an idea, like uh, you can see that a lot of groundbreaking services, innovative services today are possible because we use cloud as a platform. Without cloud, you can't get services like Uber or DD or Grab and many more interesting services. And as service providers, you may have a lot of good ideas you know, to, to use cloud and monetize. And we have the tools to support you, right? The entire journey, right from creating the service to monitoring and then monetizing. If you want to know more details of any of these products, uh, please come to our booth and uh, we are happy to discuss the specific details or give you a demo. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, I, will, I will conclude my session. If you have any questions, uh, David and I will take it now. Thank you. Thanks, Ravi. Thank you, David. Um, we have about eight, ten minutes for questions from anybody in the audience. Apparently, you two have covered everything the group needs to know about building a telco stack. Yes. Young data model. Yes. Yes, please. Um, 
I can give you a demo later if you come to our booth, but I can tell you briefly what it is. So Yang is an IETF standard, and uh, it uh, helps you to define your service intent. It's a modeling language. Uh, it's not a, a database. It's, it's a modeling language. So when you model in Yang, it's very, very easy for you to do the, the, the definitions of your service because Yang is very powerful and it allows you to define a service in, in different ways. And it's easy to also find the, the right changes later on. So it's not just a definition language, it's also a good uh, language for life cycle. So it's, it's basically uh, a standard language. And uh, when you use uh, the next generation protocols like NetConf, uh, then they also support uh, the Yang models. So what happens with NetConf is the device itself is uh, defining the Yang uh, models and, and giving it to you as a as a consumer you can simply download those yang models to to your management systems and they will understand the capabilities of the device from the yang models so yang, models look like this. yang yang is just a language yeah. yang is a way of defining uh, what you want to do and uh, and the management systems understand and implement that requirement on the network NetConf is a protocol. Yeah. NetConf is a protocol. Today, when you connect to a device, typically you use protocols like CLI. You connect with SSH or XML, SOAP. Uh, but those are uh, a translation layer because the device basically uh, understands a CLI. So you translate your requirement to a CLI. When you use uh, the NetConf, the language that the management system speaks and the language that the device understands can be the same, which is Yang. So that way, it, it speeds up the way you implement new services. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Here we go. Uh, when we move from the VC, uh, VCA, uh, VNF to the CNF, do we mean that the, the we need the terminal to have the virtualization functionality, or we will move the the functionality to the cloud side? Uh, when you move from VNF to CNF? I think it's, uh, it's not really a migration you would do. You, you basically would take that function and implement it in a different platform. Like when you implement a VNF, you're basically installing that in a in a virtual infrastructure like OpenStack. But when you do it in containers, you are, you are putting it in a different platform. But the function inside is, is the same. Like you have a router, the router can be a CNF or VNF. Yeah? Any other questions? Here we go. Uh, you explained the NSO and the uh, Cisco model is uh, much better. Uh, have you connected the other BNF or BNF manager or NFBO to the Cisco uh, product? Yes, we have done. Yeah, we have done uh, both uh, types of solutions. Like we have connected NSO to third-party VNF managers, and we have also connected our VNF manager to third-party orchestrators. I think we have one use case today to, to explain that in the third session. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Oh, okay. Well, talk about the like the CNF. Uh, do you put the containers into VM or directly to the bare metal? Uh, today we are putting it inside the VM. Is that correct? Yeah, so th the reality is uh, today it's in the VM, but we already have a plan to put it in bare metal. Um, the main challenge is persistent storage when you go to bare metal. Uh, uh, the fourth talk, we'll talk about what we are doing today in VM containers in VM and where we are evolving to that. Um, yeah, uh, the, the thing I would add to that is um, you can divide particularly VNFs into two categories. One is the sort of category that you use to control the network, and one is the category of things that forward traffic within the network. Um, they're fairly broad categories. 
Uh, what controls the network works perfectly happily in virtual machines. The, the performance um, uh, and the man that you get a slight degradation of performance for using a virtual machine, which doesn't matter terribly much in those circumstances. And you get better manageability, which is actually helpful in those circumstances. Um, the forwarding elements, that's an area where Kubernetes currently falls a bit short in terms of its networking ability, and that's something we're looking to address. Uh, by the way, uh, Ian and Chandra, who've been helping out here, are actually our next presenters. So um, I think the best way to describe our day is just we're starting at a very high altitude and digging deeper and deeper and deeper with each of our sessions. So Ian and Chandra will be up next. Um, any other questions for uh, David and Ravi? Well, thank you very much. Um, our next session is going to start in about 12 minutes at 9.50. And Ian, your, our title is Virtualized Mobile Networking Using OpenStack. So I uh, hope you can stay around for that session. And as Ravi mentioned, uh, all of the stuff that you're seeing here today is down in our booth in the marketplace. So if you want to go down, ask some more questions, get a demo, uh, please come down and visit us at the Cisco booth. So thank you for coming, and we hope we'll see you at the next session. Uh, and obviously, uh, if there's anybody you want to do is talk to us, we're usually to be found around the booth or on the show floor.